today. I got a brag on John. I have two events here in this immediate area, one today and one tomorrow. Today I'm blessed to be able to talk to you about Aggie Muster. Tomorrow I'm speaking to the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership. And BAYHAP has asked me to come in tomorrow and talk about energy policy. And I found out when I got here, because John walked up and said, Ryan, um, I'd like to talk about the introduction that I've got for you. Because we were told you're going to talk about energy policy and the Green New Deal. <laughs> and I said, no, that's not what I'm going to talk about. And we're looking at the intro, and it's got all this political stuff in there. I go, where on earth did you get this, John? It occurs to me that the Bayhat people probably think I'm going to talk about service and the spiritual nature of your life tomorrow. So we'll try that. Thank you, John, for your diligence and making sure that we were prepared. I did not grow up in Aggie. I grew up in the Dallas area, and my parents were both teachers. My dad taught physics. My mom taught chemistry. Between the two of them, they've got 82 years of education. Thank you. My dad attended the University of Texas at Arlington, and my mom attended University of Dallas. So they were born and raised in the Dallas area and continued to teach in that area, continued until they retired. And as I was getting ready to go to college, here I was, a sophomore in high school, about to be a junior in high school, my father began to consider what my collegiate options were. Now, not having grown up with either parent affiliated with any of the typical premier schools in Texas, my decisions were less about where I was going to go to school and what it was I wanted to study. Now, having two parents who were science teachers, I also enjoyed science. In fact, physics was my favorite subject. My father was really excited that I was thinking I might study engineering. So I applied to only two schools. Because as I was getting out, I was not like the four students that we celebrated here. <laughs> the list of accolades that these kids have, I had one. I graduated. <laughs> So I couldn't get into Rice, couldn't attend MIT or Caltech, anything like that. Luckily for me, I got fairly decent scores on the SAT, and I sent them to two schools, Texas A&M and the other one. <laughs> now, as we were getting ready to, to decide, and still at this point had no real allegiance to either school, we researched a couple of schools, and my father and I took a trip. And our first one was to the 40 Acres. And my second trip was with my father to Texas a and And I remember, as we went on the tour that day, that we started off in the MSC, the old MSC, and we watched the video about what it was like to be an Aggie and a day in the life of an Aggie. And I thought this was pretty cool, but what struck me the most was as I watched my father's reaction. We went around the campus that day, and we visited with people in the engineering program, and we talked to members of the Corps of Cadets, and we talked to current students, and I was blown away by how everybody said howdy to everybody else. Well, at one point, we got to talk to a current, a, a, a Corps senior, because I was considering maybe joining the Corps. And this senior described to us the Aggie Muster tradition. And as he was describing that someday, every Aggie will pass away. And he described that when you do, there'll be a roll call for you somewhere. And somebody, your friends or your family, will answer here because you're absent and you can't answer for yourself. My father, who was a very left-brained, very typical man of the time, strong father figure, began to tear up as we watched that senior core student describe Aggie Muster. You know, I was a junior in high school, really, really didn't understand the significance of what I was hearing, but my father did. And we left a and that day. My father says, you know, son, you can go to school anywhere you want to go, but you'd be an idiot if you don't go to school here. <laughs> 
You know, in the world we live in today, the ideas, the fundamental ideas that bring us together today are more needed than they ever have been. We were joking at the table tonight, just having dinner, about the fact that our kids are growing up in a world that tells them constantly, go get yours. Go out and earn your living. Get status. Get cars. Get houses. Take nice vacations. All about what you can do to advance your own life. To be successful, which is, of course, a fine message. And right now, all the parents of these young students are going, Ryan, don't break this up for me. <laughs> but where is it that we learn to think about somebody else? Where is that profoundly important piece of leadership, which is to put other people before yourself? You know, the thing I love about the stories I hear when every young Aggie shows up for their first day on, in College Station, it's not the classroom they show up in first. For most of them, it's fish camp, where they get swept off, and for three days solid, they are brainwashed. <laughs> and while I joke about being brainwashed, what I came away with after my three days at fish camp was a belief, a firm belief, that the institution of Texas A&M was more important than me. And an understanding that being an Aggie was about being a member of a community, not holding a degree. Today, I'm very blessed to serve in a couple of different leadership roles, and my experience in leadership has evolved a lot over the last few years. You know, in the introduction that John gave, he talked about the engineering firm my wife and I started. And this is before I ran for railroad commissioner. We started a little company right here in Houston. In 2006, we started Pinnacle. Pinnacle, at the time, was called Pinnacle Asset Integrity Services. Started it in our house, and it grew a little bit. In 2007, got a little bigger. 2008, got a little bit bigger. Here we are in 2019, and so it's been in business of almost 13 years. And today, Pinnacle employs 900 people. And what I have learned over the last three years is that when you have a business of that size, I don't care what industry you're into, just at the table today, Mark's in the business of uh, commercial car fleets. Greg's in the business of catering. Well, you've got 40 people that work for you, 20 people that work for you, 200 people that work for you, 10,000 people that work for you. It doesn't matter what industry, but you've got to lead. And the best leaders show up every single day and say, what can I do to help all of you elevate your game? What can I do to inspire you? What can I do to get you to make a bigger difference in the world? You know, a lot of us today have the good fortune of employing a handful of Aggies. When we do, we get the benefit of that profound lesson that our school teaches. Sure, I absolutely want my kids to go to Texas A&M. There's no question. When the financial planner asked me one time, you know, so what kind, of, what kind of college would you like your kids to go to? Texas A&M. I said, no, okay, so a public school. No, I didn't say a public school. <laughs> Texas A&M. He got to laugh. said, okay, so you'll make sure. That, well, I said, look, my money's going to Texas A&M. They can go wherever they want. <laughs> it's getting hard to get in there, though. I'm sitting here listening to these group of students, and I would tell you, if I graduated from high school today like I did in... 1993, I would not get into AM today. So my hope for my kids is that they attend AM, but you know what? More than anything, what I hope for them is that they learn the lessons somewhere that I learned while I was there. When we left AM that day, and my father said, You would be foolish to go anywhere else besides this, he talked about the muster tradition. We'd never been to it. We'd never even seen pictures. We had just heard this cadet tell us the stories. And my father, he says, you know, Ryan, think about because he's trying to get me to understand what, a, what an amazing tradition this is. And here I am, just this junior high school student, so full of myself, it was ridiculous. And Dad is telling me, Ryan, think about it. Who is going to answer the call when you are absent? You know, I'll tell you, still at that time, it didn't resonate with me. But you fast forward... 25 years, and it sure does today. If I could take any Aggie tradition, 
and share it with the rest of the world. It wouldn't be football. It wouldn't be the bonfire. It wouldn't be elephant walk. It would be Aggie mustard. Because I would love for everyone to go into every job, every nonprofit, every church, go into their communities, go into the voting booth, wherever it is they touch their neighbors, their families, their friends, and ask the question, who will answer the call when I'm not here? Who will say here when I am absent? Because this Aggie tradition is not like a eulogy. It's, it's not like a funeral. Sure, we all have that opportunity where we celebrate life. But in this moment, in this tradition, we do something so unique for Aggies because we celebrate all of us. We all get here and we don't just celebrate a life that we knew, a life of someone that passed that was close to us. We celebrate the lives of so many people who, whose names we don't know. But they were Aggies. And so we'll answer the call. I'll leave you with this, with this one idea. This Aggie tradition that we are here to celebrate today is an amazing one. And we're blessed to have it in our hearts. My hope is that all of the Aggies who are not here, who are busy with, like my wife, who's busy taking our son to his basketball game, our friends who are busy with other family events, who have a job thing, who have a travel thing, that we remind them that this tradition is not just about being an Aggie. This represents that value that our institution, I believe, teaches more than any other institution of higher learning that I've ever been exposed to. And it's that, it's that value of service that we put everybody else ahead of ourselves. We put God and family, our communities, we put them before ourselves and that this tradition of muster is the time when we finally get together for all those people who, who are no longer with us and celebrate the fact that each and every one of them touched somebody's life and that's why somebody is here when they are absent to answer the call thank you very much for letting me spend some time with you this evening Have a great